Okay, so how is everyone today? So, shh, 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 shh. Can you believe it? It's October. Last time we were talking about um, functions. Still talking about functions. So, shh. So, let's consider uh, the following. So, for example, a, uh, a cell phone company uh, has a plan <coughs> with say, mm, this is, these aren't realistic numbers, but okay, let's just do it. A plan with, uh, it's $30 per month. And 100 megabytes is included of, of data. Uh, and it's zero point zero five dollars uh, per megabyte uh, over one hundred. Okay, so this is not really realistic these days, but okay, let's go with it. <coughs> okay, so. Let's try and make sure we understand the particulars of, the, of, of this plan. So what if, what if you say, ah, oh, forget society, and you just go out into the woods for a month, and you've just left your cell phone in the drawer, and then you come back a month later, then what's your bill? $30, $30 right? For, just for the privilege of having your cell phone. OK, what if you use, uh, say, 80 megabytes? Thirty dollars, right? Because that, that's that's the way it works. Uh, what if what if you use one hundred one megabytes? Then it'd be thirty dollars and five cents because you went one over the agreed upon one hundred, one megabyte over the over the agreed upon one hundred, so they charged you a nickel. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to write a function that does this. So write a function. C for the uh, write a function C for the cost of M megabytes. So I want a function that looks like C of M. Okay. So <laughs> this function, uh, it sort of changes its mind depending on how, how many megabytes you have, right? So then for, for zero megabytes, it's 30. For one and a half, it's 30. For uh, 77, it's 30. So for a lot of times, it's 30. So as a result, one of the clauses will be that it's 30. So when, when is it, for what values of m is it 30? So z 0 to 100. 0 less or equal m less or equal 100. <coughs> so that is to say that for any, for any m value between 0 and 100, the cost is 30. OK. Now let's figure out. Uh, the cost if you happen to go over 100. So, so this inequality, the name for it is called the guard. So what's the guard to get into the second clause when the behavior is different? So what inequality must be true? M greater than 100. 
Okay, so now let's think. What, what expression should go right here? So what? Okay, so the first thing I heard was 30 plus uh, 0.05m. Okay, and this is not right. <laughs> But it's what, it's what many students first think. So let's try and see. It's nearly right. Let's, uh, let's try and see what the answer should be. So remind me again. What if you use exactly 101 megabytes? Then what should the price be? It should be $30. And then you went over one megabyte. So another nickel. Yeah? Right. So, so if we plugged in 101 into this formula right here, then that'd be 101 nickels, right, plus $30. Is it supposed to be 101 nickels? No, it's supposed to be just one of them, right? So the one that we went over, it's really M minus 100. Okay, and that, that does it. Okay, so let's make sure that, uh, that we can evaluate this. So supposing that I ask, well, what is C evaluated at, um, say, mm, I don't know, 97? So what is that? It's 30, right? Because what's happening is that this is the value of M. And then we're going to go over to the clauses, to the guards, and ask, well, which one does that one fall in? It falls in this one. It's that one, right? So then uh, the answer is 30. <coughs> and similarly, how about C of 120? In this case, which guard? The second one, right? The second one because here the argument M is 120 and that's, this one is true for that. Okay. So it would be $30 uh, and 20 nickels, which is, uh, what, a dollar? So that'd be $31. Good. Any question about this? Okay. So let's, let's make the following table. of M. So how about uh, 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. That's probably enough to get the point across. How about it? What if you do zero megabytes? 30. Yeah, it's boring, I know. What about, uh, <laughs> what about 50 megabytes? 30. 100? 30. Okay, so I colored all the ones that come from the first clause in red. Well, well I, wrote, I wrote all the ones that come from the first clause in red. So now all the other ones they're going to come from the second clause. 
in the second clause because the second guard is true. So if you plug in 150, what do you get? 3250. And if you plug in 200, Thirty-five, right? Is that right? Yeah, thirty-five. Okay, so you could probably see the pattern now, right? Two and a half dollars, two and a half more dollars, two and a half more dollars. Okay. Good. So if we if we went one more column and, and wrote three hundred, then that would be forty dollars. Okay, <clears throat> let's plot this. So this is M, and this C of M. And because the, because the cost starts at 30, which is way high up there, I guess, Instead of drawing a whole bunch of tick marks getting all the way up to 30, the, the style is that you write a little break right here that says, yeah, I'm, I cut out some of the vertical axis and it's, it's missing. And here's the first mark here at uh, 30. So all that stuff, it's all still there, but I just deleted it because otherwise the graph, the plot would be way too tall. Okay. So then how about we make this 35 and this 40 and then 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 200. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'll plot all of the ones that come from the first clause in red. So at zero it's thirty dollars, at fifty it's thirty dollars, at a hundred it's thirty dollars. So all those came from the first clause. And uh, if we were to plot, say, seventy-five, what would be the cost of 75 megabytes? Thirty dollars, right? So that mean that would mean there'd be another point right there. And I think you could probably believe me when I say, well, I'll just fill in all these. All of this. This is the region in which you pay thirty dollars. Okay, then. Suppose you. Uh, suppose you use 150 megabytes and your cost is 3250. Well, that would be about right here. And then 200 would be up here at 35. And then 250 would be at about 3750. Okay, so now big dots <laughs> so that the, so that they line up. <laughs> okay, so I connected those, but then my question to you is is what about what about right here? Are we, what are we supposed to do there? Should there be a gap? Should there not be a gap? Right. Because let's consider what if what if uh, well, we evaluated it right there, 120 megabytes. For 120 megabytes, the cost is 31. So at about 120, it'd be about like right there. And then if we were to evaluate it in another place, say like 140, the cost would be about right there. So what's going to happen is, is, is if we just choose a whole bunch of points there, we'll end up filling this in. Interesting. And I think without much objection, I could say that, it, that this green behavior just keeps going. 
interesting. So any question about this one? This is a totally uh, standard kind of thing. Uh, like, what's the cost of renting a car? Well, it's going to cost, I don't know, $200 a week plus 10 cents a mile. So if you do zero miles, if you just, if you just go out into the, into the parking lot and just sleep in the car, it's going to be $200. But uh, for every mile you drive, it'll do that. And, and then they might have some kind of other thing that says, well, it's $200 per week so long as you only travel 500 miles. But, it, but for every mile that you go over 500, it's going to cost a dollar. <laughs> That's something ridiculous. Good. Any question about this? OK. <clears throat> So, from last time, uh, we talked about the following kind of thing. We were drawing these arrow diagrams. So, one, two, three, A, B, C, D. And uh, so, I want to draw a function, and I'm going to do it in the arrow diagram style. What is the what is the rule for a function? What do you have to do to make it right? Right. Just one. Right, exactly one. And that is to say from every from every element in the domain there must be uh, exactly one arrow leaving it. Exactly one arrow leaving it. So something like this. So now I want to address what, what, what does this requirement look like when you try and plot a function, when you try and plot something like we just plotted this. So these are two different kinds of drawings. This one is plotting a function. This one is making a function with, with points and arrows. What does it look like uh, for this? So the <coughs> requirement that every element in the domain has one arrow leaving then I'll leave myself a blank and I'm going to draw a few examples Okay, so let's consider a drawing that we all know and love. How about something like, uh, like a circle? Okay, so the question I want to ask is, 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 if I were to draw one of these diagrams, you could tell me whether or not it's a function by checking whether or not exactly one arrow leaves everything in the domain. Now the question is, is what if I draw for you something like this and I ask you, well, does this represent a function? And the question is, is how do you, how do you check? So some of you all know the answer. So what's the answer? Vertical. Vertical line test, right? So let's consider. Let's consider. What if this, what if this right here is point one? That, that, that is 
x is equal to 1 is right there. So if this is a function, then and if we input 1, how many outputs should we get? One. Just 1. But how many y values are there corresponding to 1? There's 2. So the fact that there are two intersections is just like saying that there's two arrows leaving one. One of them is pointing at that y value right there, and the other is pointing at that y value right there, and we can't have that. So what's the answer to this? Is this a function or is it not? It is not. Not a function. Okay. How about how about this one? Is it a function? It is, right? Because let's consider. Let's consider. Um, notice that if, when I take my magic prop here, and I move from side to side. Wherever the, wherever the line is hitting the, the x-axis, that's the input value. 